I would like to also enter into the record a screenshot of a text message I received from the uh, esteemed professor from Vanderbilt, Michael Eric Dyson, after my CNN interview, begged me for photos. In this text, he says, after calling me a uh, racist on CNN, Shh, don't tell anybody, we look good together, and sent me a kissy emoji. Without then objection. The guy, the guy says, order. I'm gorgeous and all these photos. I don't think he's that bent out of shape on how anyone pronounces Kamala. Uh, and if we're going to have that standard, you got to hold it to both sides, not just one or the, one or the other. I would like to also... You question Kamala Harris on her policies. You question the media about not asking her questions. <laughs> they call you racist. And this takes us to this next clip. Michael Eric Dyson on The View talking about white women. The point is that, that this woman has now depended upon, like her inspiration, Donald Trump, a mm -hmm. racist trope. Yeah. The black brute seeks That's the right. innocent white woman, That's and right. now I'm seeking lasciviously to approach her. I didn't call her names. I acknowledge her humanity. And I'll say one final thing to all of these white Christians, and she's one of them. The, the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn their face to God and turn away from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, yes. and then I will forgive their sins and I will heal the land. Right. They have not forgiven themselves. White Christians hate themselves for the past wrongs that have been done. And I'm here as a loving Christian to say, let's grapple with that past, acknowledge the historic legacy of, of supremacy. Don't deny it. Don't erase it. Don't eviscerate it. Don't remove it from the history books. Confront it. And then when you forgive yourselves, we can go forward. I am a... Wow. Mm -hmm. So, Yana, you heard what he said. White... Christian women hate themselves. They can't forgive themselves of, of, of the racial past in America. I mean, do you hate yourself? <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And he is not like, he's not a, a Christian. Oh, he's a pastor. Well, a Christian would never say something like that. What does, okay, I'm not even from this country, but re, re, I mean, originally, right. but regardless, let's say a, a, a white lady who's been here for generations, what does it matter that her great, 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 like from a Christian perspective, we are judged as individuals. Like, so for him to bring Christianity into it, that's actually conflating Christianity with Marxism mm. with this idea of the infiltration is yes. what we're talking That's about. Absolutely. They have infiltrated every institution in America, the churches, the government. Marxism has infiltrated you, just education. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've said for a while now it's the pundits, the politicians, the professors, the preachers, and the pastors that spew a whole lot of putrid. Foolishness. Michael Eric Dyson, Dyson, Dyson right? Mm -hmm. He can quote Second Chronicles seven, and he makes it sound like he's so erudite, and that you know he knows the word. Okay, fine. Um, I you think know that the devil knows the Bible too. I was going to say that that same <laughs> word says that you know the Satan knows the word too, but. Nowhere does it make a distinction that because you are a white Christian versus a black Christian that you have to forgive yourself for whatever he wants to come up with because he's a pastor. These are the same types of pastors and pundits and preachers, politicians and professors that will drive people to hell. Yeah. OK, these are the same types. He he's. Um, He's, he's almost, I would say he's a blasphemer, okay? If you want to yeah. use, the, use the scriptures or whatever. He's blaspheming. He's perverting the word. There's another P for the alliteration. He's perverting the word. He's perverting people's minds. And all of those women on that panel, you know, they're giddy. Nobody is going to correct him. Nobody's going to challenge him because with this academic title and he's a writer and he's a professor, you know, he, he, he's one of their high priests okay so he sits on the throne of whatever this um marx's mantle is so he looks like he knows what he's talking about you know what i have to say this i really do in all humility i'm going to humble myself like he said in second chronicles in all humility i hate having to call men bitches but he is really one of them
how we can uh, also derive a living in the midst of a white supremacist culture that really denied us access to our own uh, humanity. So I think what white brothers and sisters miss is that they don't have that sense of necessity when it comes to black life. Take it or leave it. Uh, we're curious about it. We'll study it. If not, no skin off our hour, backs, no water, you know, off of our necks. There's nothing lost when we don't know about black life. Now, when we hear Aretha Franklin or John Coltrane or Toni Morrison, when we read her or James Baldwin, or when we take in Jay-Z or Beyonce, we understand what we're, you know, being treated to, uh, a festivity, a uh, joie de vivre, a kind of serious investment in joy and um, a, a kind of understanding of the soulful capacity of blackness and the magnitude of our humanity articulated through sports, through pop culture, through literature, through preaching. And so they get a sense of that in the most visible avatars and symbols of our culture. But for the most part, the ordinary black person is obscured and the genius and the courage and the power of that ordinary blackness is somehow deflected and unknown to many white brothers and sisters, which is why they're surprised in so many instances. Think about the fact that, to take an example, when Barack Obama was running for president and the sermons of Jeremiah Wright came to the fore. Well, black people have been hearing preaching like that for hundreds of years, um, a couple hundred ye uh, years at least, and more than that. And so, you know, in the black public sphere that is often rendered private because of lack of white curiosity deadened and deflected knowledge of blackness. Yeah. And you just said one thing you said that was spot on. It's a perversion. Yeah. And we have said again on this show, it is an example of Satanism. Mm -hmm. Satanism is a perversion of Christ, a perversion of morality, a perversion of good. And everything we have talked about tonight in regards to the left and the things that they are trying to do to our institutions, to our constitution, to our churches, is a perversion of it. It is Satanism. And this is what we've been talking about. And who was a Satanist? Karl Marx. And that's a good point because Satan wants to divide us. Right. right. And so when this so-called pastor is talking about race, when as a as Christians, we have to focus on spirit mm -hmm. and not on, on body. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's exactly what Marxists would do. Uh, they bring up this race, ethnicity, you know, identity politics, and Satan wants to divide us. He doesn't like us being united. Yeah. yeah. And guys, this is what we talk about across the board on our shows here. Pop and Politics is just one show of many that we have on the Metro Conservative Media Network. So it's Pop and Politics. We have Just the Guy show. Yep, there it is. Uh, we also have the All American Talk Show. Uh, that's here on YouTube. And my show, Christian Conservative with KJ. All YouTube channels, all talking conservative talk, but just from different um, angles, you know, for instance, we have just the guys, they come from a, a gentleman's point, point of view. Uh, we have KJ conservative, my Christian conservative with KJ. I come from a biblical point of view. Uh, we have the all American talk show. I mean, the list goes on. You guys got to check out each show and subscribe because we got to amplify this rallying call for freedom. All of these shows are about freedom. 